To get maximum efficiency out of our solar array, we went with this seasonally adjustable ground mount rack system from Sinclair Designs. I'm gonna show you how we installed this into the side of this steep slope at our homestead here in Southern Utah. I'll also show you how we trenched underground to get the wiring over to the barn where our batteries and inverters are. And at the end, I'll show you how we actually adjust it. Right now it's mid-September. It's a little brisk this morning. I can feel fall is upon us. The sun is beginning to change its trajectory to be lower on the horizon. So as it goes across the sky, it's more southern and I need to angle the rack a little bit more to capture more of that southern sun as it goes lower on the horizon. So we'll show you how we do that. If you want to see what we paid for this whole system or learn more about the details of the componentry, I'll link those videos in the description below. Let's jump into the plans and I'll walk you through some of the key details for context. The rack faces true south, not magnetic south. True south is based on the Earth's axis and longitude lines, and that's what gives us maximum annual energy production here in the Northern Hemisphere. When preparing to lay out my posts for the rack, I use the string line to approximate where magnetic south is, but I need to make an adjustment. So I downloaded this Sun Surveyor app, and this uses the magnetometer in your phone and makes an adjustment. You can see on the right-hand side there, I'm making an adjustment by moving my phone to 180 degrees, that's true south. And it shows that it's adding plus 10.64 degrees to magnetic south to get that true reading. And you can see as I scroll my finger across the timeline, it will move the sun and the moon across the sky. And this is accounting for my exact location and giving me very accurate true south directional information for me to line up my string line and lay out my posts. Here in the bill of materials, you can see the parts for our 44 panel configuration. Sinclair has other layouts, so this is a scalable system depending on how many panels you want. Our adjustable system retails for about $6,000, not including tax, freight, or the panels, of course, just for the rack itself. For additional strength, we used five 95 pound vertical posts. These are the heavier nine inch by four inch versions designed for high wind loads that we have here in Southern Utah. Across those, we've laid five 71 pound trusses, each pinned with a single large bolt so the rack can pivot for seasonal adjustments on that single bolt. Then we've added five manual jacks so that we can make the adjustments throughout the year and 16 Z purlins spanning the trusses and cantilever extensions on the east side so we can squeeze in the two extra panels for a total of 44. Now I could always mirror that on the west side and add two more panels if we wanted to expand. Now in areas of softer soil, you can just pound these straight into the ground. Our site was different. This terrace that we're building on was built from the barn excavation material. It's full of boulders and uncompacted fill. So instead I dug larger holes so that I could pull out all the boulders. And then we used sono tubes to pour the concrete. I went extra deep on the footings. We've got five posts, so five footings, two feet wide by eight feet deep to give me confidence that this array won't settle, tilt, or shift in the 60 to 70 mile an hour winds that we get out here in Southern Utah. Now that was quite a bit more expensive, of course, but for me to have a one and done solution that I never have to worry about when I hear those howling winds outside, it was well worth it. At the steep 55 degree angle, we had to double check clearances so the panels don't hit the ground. At the shallow 15 degree summer tilt, we had to watch for surrounding tree branches because at this angle, the whole array takes up quite a bit bigger footprint. And we just have to go out and trim the trees on the east end to make sure the branches don't grow out and potentially blow in the wind and hit the panels. As I mentioned, the terrace was made from the excavated barn dirt and that gave us this very large flat area that we needed to put the array on. I was really struggling with how I was going to mount the array and have it up high enough to be above the tree level so we don't get a drop in production because of the shadows from the trees. So building the barn and the array at the same time gave us the dirt, the elevation, and a large flat area that was much easier to mount the solar array on. And all of the adjustability gives us the flexibility that we need for our production to be high all year long. Now, I've had several comments asking why I didn't mount them to the roof of the barn, so let me address that. The primary reason is because we wanted this seasonal adjustability. Another reason is because of easy access. And when I need to clean the panels or remove snow, I don't need to get ladders out or worry about slipping and falling off the roof. 
The third reason is because these KB 450 watt solar panels are bifacial. That means they can collect energy from underneath as well as the main generating surface from the top. And with this light color pea gravel, we're able to reflect light from the ground underneath up onto the bottom of the panels. And that's something we would not be able to have with a roof mounted system. Before we poured the concrete, we had to set the conduit to carry the wires from the array back to the barn where the inverters and batteries live. From there, the wiring crosses the barn floor to the load center, which also serves as the junction between the barn, the array, and the house. Here's a basic schematic. I use the backhoe to dig a trench from the barn down under the drainage ditch that surrounds three sides and then across the terrace to the array. The array itself is broken into smaller strings. That means if I ever need to replace a panel, I can just shut down one section instead of the whole system. Breaking a big array into multiple strings is best practices. It improves safety, performance, and maintenance. For safety, each string has its own DC isolator switch, so I can work on that part of the system without risk of shock. For arc protection, DC isolators also include fuses or breakers to prevent a fault in one string from damaging the rest. And for emergency shutdown, if first responders ever need to kill the power, these switches give them a safe way to do it. From the isolators, the wires feed into a junction box and from there over to the inverters. We set the conduit about three feet down below the frost line and deep enough to protect against accidental digging or even when I pounded these fence posts in later. That fence, by the way, was required by the county mainly to protect mule deer from chewing the wires and getting electrocuted. And finally, once the array was wired, we had to pull this two aught wire all the way from the barn over to the house. And that's a long run for heavy wire. And believe me, Pulling it was not the most fun part of the project, but it's what ties the whole system together. We adjust the array four times a year to maximize efficiency. In summer, from June through August, I'll set it at 15 degrees, which is almost flat to catch the sun high overhead at this latitude. In fall, from September through October, we set it to 35 degrees, which is what we just did yesterday because it's September now. The sun's now starting to dip lower in the southern sky. For winter, from November through February, we'll set it to 55 degrees, which is fairly upright. And this angle also allows the southern sun to hit the array straight on, and it helps snow slide off and makes it easier to clear off the stubborn stuff if we do get ice on the array. And in spring, from March through May, we'll set it back to 35 degrees before returning to 15 for summer. The process is really simple. I loosen these two bolts that hold the adjustable jack to the post. The bracket has these slots that allow it to pivot slightly, so by loosening them, you're allowing that to move a little bit without binding up. Then my wife and I crank the handles about 10 to 15 turns at a time on each jack so that we don't twist the panels or the rack unevenly. And then to check the angle, I use a carpenter square with a level. You can grab these at any big box hardware store. Each post is set, and then I secure the handle so the array can't backwind under the pressure of heavy gusts. And then the last step is just tightening the jack brackets and that's it. The whole adjustment takes about 30 minutes and then the system is dialed in until the next season. Now, if you'd like to see more detailed video of how we assembled the rack and installed the panels, be sure to let me know in the comments. I use the comment section as a gauge for interest in new content. I do have lots of videos that show more of a step-by-step -step installation process, including the jig that I built for proper panel spacing, and some of the ways that we would hold hardware in place while we were setting panels with just two people as opposed to having a crew, which would have been a lot easier. So that's the Sinclair seasonally adjustable ground mount system. I really like knowing that we've got the ability to sort of chase the sun as it changes its angle in the sky to really maximize the efficiency of the panels that we have here. I also like the fact that we can use this pea gravel down below here on this flat deck to bounce some of that sunlight back up to these bifacial panels and gain even more efficiency that way. If these were mounted on the roof, we wouldn't be able to do that. And I also like the fact that we've got the wiring nice and neatly configured underneath this array so that when people visit the ranch, the solar array, just like everything, looks nice, neat, clean, well thought out. That's just the way we like to do things here. Hopefully you gleaned a few items from this video today that you might be able to use on your solar build. I'd love to hear how you built your ground mount rack system. And if you've got any ideas on how we can make this one more efficient, I'd love to hear that. Drop it in the comments. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.